Thank God for his presence here this morning. The word in my heart that I hope will be life-changing to you as much as it's been life-changing to me. I want you to go to Psalms 89, please. Psalm 89. This is going to be a wonderful day. I know who the speaker is this afternoon, and I know who the speaker is tonight. And I am very excited. We don't announce speakers here. Simple reason, we don't want people to come to hear a man. We come to hear the word of the Lord. Nobody knew I was going to preach here this morning. That's just the way it is here. Amen. Psalm 89, let's start verse 1. Psalm 89, I'm going to read the first 15 verses of this chapter. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. With my mouth will I make known thy faithfulness to all generations. For I have said, Mercy shall be built up forever. Thy faithfulness shall thou establish in the very heavens. I have made a covenant with my chosen. I have sworn unto David my servant. Thy seed will I establish forever and build up thy throne to all generations. And the heavens shall praise thy wonders, O Lord, thy faithfulness also in the congregation of the saints. For who in the heaven can be compared unto the Lord? Who among the sons of the mighty can be likened unto the Lord? God is greatly to be feared in the assembly of the saints and to be had in reverence of all them that are about him. O Lord of hosts, who is a strong Lord unto the, like unto thee, or to thy faithfulness round about thee, thou rulest the raging of the sea. When the waves thereof arise, thou stillest them. Thou hast broken Rahab in pieces as one that is slain. Thou hast scattered thine enemies with thy strong arm. The heavens are thine, the earth also is thine. As for the world and the fullness thereof, thou hast founded them. The north and the south, thou hast created them. Tabor and Hermon shall rejoice in thy name. Now listen to these next verses. Thou hast a mighty arm, strong as thy hand and high as thy right hand. Justice and judgment are the habitation of thy throne. Mercy and truth shall go before thy face. And my message is taken from verse 15. Blessed is the people that know the joyful sound. They shall walk, O Lord, in the light of thy countenance. That's my message. Blessed is the people who know the joyful sound. Heavenly Father, I thank you for the word that you planted in my heart. The Holy Spirit, I appeal to you. Because without your anointing, without the unction of your spirit, I can't make a mark. Let alone on this congregation. I can't do it in my own heart even without you, Holy Spirit. And I pray that you come now and open the word of the Lord. And bring a shout. Help us to understand and know what this joyful sound is all about this morning. We are about to enter a great time in these last days of rejoicing before you because the truth shall set us free. For you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. <clears throat> Blessed is the people who know the joyful sound. The psalmist said, Blessed are the people who know the joyful sound. They shall walk in the light of thy countenance. And what the psalmist is saying, there's a revelation here that once you lay hold of it, will absolutely change your life. You're going to walk not in darkness anymore, but in light. You're going to walk in the light of his face. And in the original, in the Hebrew, it suggests you will wake up in the morning with a happiness, waking up every day, looking in the strength, drawing strength from his face. In other words, change from glory to glory. If you understand and know the joyful sound. Now the psalmist has discovered a glorious secret here to a fulfilled joyful life. Folks, I don't want to read a how-to book anymore, how to find joy. I want to get it right out of the book. And here it is this morning out before us and I pray that you ask God for an understanding this morning so that you can understand because it said, they who know this joyful sound, they shall walk, O Lord, in the light. They walk in the light of thy countenance. Those who know the joyful sound will become self-assured. They will not live in fear. They will not live in guilt. They have experienced a sense of security. This will bring to you the greatest sense of security you've ever known once you understand it. Now, the joyful sound the psalmist is referring to is a powerful revelation based on the Jewish festival called the Jubilee, the year of the Jubilee. 
And the history of it is found in Leviticus 25. And I'd like you to turn to the 25th chapter of Leviticus. And let me set a foundation for the truth this morning. Leviticus, the 25th chapter, please. Now, once you find it, turn this way and give me your good ear. In Leviticus, the 25th chapter, the Lord has commanded Israel to proclaim a Sabbath year every seventh year. Six years they could sow their fields and prune their vineyards and reap and harvest, plant and buy and sell. But on the seventh year was to be a Sabbath year, which means that the land was to lay fallow. You were not to plant a seed. You were not to prune your vineyard. You were not to harvest anything. It was a year of festival. It was a time to give yourself completely to the Lord. And you, you find this in Leviticus 3 and 4. <clears throat> Follow me if you will, please. Leviticus 3 and 4. Six years thou shalt sow thy field, and the six years thou shalt prune the vineyard, and gather in the fruit thereof. But in the seventh year shall be a Sabbath of rest unto land, a Sabbath for the Lord. Thou shalt neither sow thy land, nor prune thy vineyard. Now, look at me, please. This is very, very important. Every seven years, God brought his people to a place of utter dependence on himself. Utter dependence. They were not to plant. They were not to sow. They were to literally, their agriculture stopped everything. The Lord said, I want everything stopped. You will not plant. You will not sow. You're going to be totally, wholly dependent upon me. God was trying to build their faith and to prove his utter faithfulness to his children. He brought them to a place of utter, by commandment, utter dependence on him. And then the people would ask, but what are we going to do on the seventh year if we are not sowing? And you'll find that in verse 20. And if you say, what shall we eat the seventh year? Behold, we shall not sow. We will not gather in our increase. He said, the question is going to be asked, what are we going to do if we become wholly dependent on the Lord? What are we going to do because we, we will not have food for our cattle, we will not have any uh, thing from the ground to feed in the seventh year, because what we use in the sixth year is gone, in the seventh year there'll be nothing left. We can't feed our children. The grapes will just rot on the vine, other than the poor being allowed to come in and take what they can. But what are we going to do? And folks, God is demanding of his people that they take a whole year with no visible support and put their lives in his hands. Folks, we panic after a week, let alone a year. And they say, what are we going to do? Now listen to what God says. Then I will command my blessing upon you in the sixth year, and it shall bring forth fruit for three years. God said, I'm going to give you a triple harvest. He said, if you step out in faith and put your trust in me, I'll give you a triple harvest on the sixth year that will last you through the seventh and the eighth year, even into the ninth year. There will, you will live off the provisions of the sixth year. What God is saying, I can be trusted. I can be trusted. If you step out in faith, I will meet every need. Amazing thing. When you, you show, so the eighth year and you shall eat of the old fruit until the ninth year, until the fruit come up, you shall eat of the old provision. And the Bible says it will be more than sufficient. And in that time, not one single Israelite had to beg. Nobody went hungry. Amazing miracle that on the sixth year, amazing, that automatically when they stepped out in faith, they could hardly contain the harvest. They stored it up. It would last for three years. Amazing how God makes provision for those who trust Him. Look in the Word of God off to from beginning uh, to end, and you'll see nothing but provision made. Remember, in the wilderness, no grocery stores, no supermarkets, nothing visible. There wasn't a blade of grass in sight. And yet God rains food out of heaven. He causes water to come out of a rock. 
He sends birds by the bushel just fall onto the ground outside their camp. Waters turn to wine. Shoes and clothing that never wore out for 40 years. Armies that heard strange noises and left enough supplies to feed whole cities. Tax money out of a fish's mouth. Five loaves and two fishes feed 5,000. And now here in Leviticus 25, if you will step out and trust me, this great phenomena, this six year, I'll give you a triple harvest. Hallelujah. I'm saying to you, God can be trusted, folks. And all these miraculous supplies scream at us. Step out in faith. God will be faithful. God commanded seven consecutive years. He said, every seventh year is a Sabbath, and I want you to commemorate this Sabbath. I want you to celebrate this Sabbath year every seven years for uh, a period of 49 years. Seven times seven. 49 years. Now, this is a whole generation. Enough time to give a generation to learn to trust the Lord. A whole generation. So that parents and grandparents have built up a history of the faithfulness of God so they can tell the children and the grandchildren, yes, it's true. The first seven years after the sixth year, God supplied. And in the seventh year, some of us were afraid, but there was always enough. God saw us through even to the eighth year, right up to the ninth year. And all the stories, sometimes it was scary, but God saw us through. Sometimes he tested our faith, but God was faithful. And they told these stories and built up the faith of the people. Of course, there were some that cheated. Human nature being what it is, they're no different than we are today. I know many of them went out subtly, covertly at night, and they were planting their fields, and they were saying, well, I just can't go that way. I don't have that kind of faith. And those that did that, I want to tell you, their crops got diseased, and they became poor and poor and began to lose their lands. When God says, trust me, he means every word of it. The 50th year... See, they've had seven sevens now. They've had, they've had seven Sabbath years where they were totally dependent on the Lord. Now, folks, God had something in mind because on the 50th year was the year of Jubilee. The year of Jubilee means the sounding of the trumpets. These were the sounding of the trumpets of liberty throughout the land. And on the 50th year, after seven experiences, seven testings of faith, and beloved, they could have never believe God for what he was going to do on the 50th year until they'd had a history, until the Lord had built up their faith. Folks, every miracle God's done for you, he wants you to remember. He's trying to build up something for you because some great and mighty thing that he has done that you and I have not yet laid hold of, and you can't lay hold of until your faith is intact until your faith is solid. It's a wonderful thing that the Lord has done on the 50th year. Go to verse 8 and 9, the 25th, 25th chapter. Thou shalt number seven Sabbaths of years unto thee, seven times seven years. And the space of seven Sabbaths of years shall be unto thee forty and nine years. Then, this is the 50th year, then shalt thou cause the trumpet of the Jubilee to sound. On the 10th day of the 7th month, in the day of atonement, shall you make the trumpet sound throughout all your land. Oh, glory be to God. Folks, when you begin to understand the meaning of the Jubilee, you'll understand the text that I started with. And I pray you pray for an understanding now. The year of Jubilee happened on the day, or the, the, the Jubilee trumpet sounded simultaneously with the high priest ascending up into those grand stairs into the temple and going into the Holy of Holies. Now this is the 50th year, and on the 50th year, the year of Jubilee was a year of liberty. At a given moment, at the moment that the high priest was in the Holy of Holies, when he was sprinkling the blood at that very moment, at a pre-prescribed uh, moment, trumpets begin to blast all over Jerusalem, all over Judah, all over Israel, the mountains, the hills, the valleys. Trumpeters were trumpeting the sound. It was jubilee. 
And every Israelite knew the joyful sound. In fact, it's called the joyful sound. It was a year of freedom and liberty because you have to understand that in the Jewish economy, nobody really owned the land. They were given an inheritance and it stayed in their family as long as they lived. But God wanted them to know that he owned everything. God owns everything. Folks, he owns everything you and I have. The bank doesn't own your car. The bank doesn't own your condo. God owns it all. He owns the cattle on a thousand hills. The rich man that tore down his little barns and built bigger barns and set himself up for life and said, I'm going to sit back and take it easy. The next day he's dead. God owns it all. He's going to let everybody know it. They were only leaseholders. And if, uh, if, if, uh, if uh, a farmer, for example, had 50 acres or 100 acres, and he either through mismanagement or through sloth or through some kind of a disaster, he got in debt. The first thing he'd do, he would do, he would sell his children into bond servantry. And they would be given as bond servants to, there, there was no provision for bankruptcy, but to his debtor, he would give his daughter or his sons whatever it took. And if he kept going deeper and deeper into debt, finally he had to give up his land to his debtor. And his, the debtor would come in and take the land. Now the value of the land in those days was, uh, known only or set only by its distance from the Jubilee year because every 50 years, everyone who had sold his children into bond slavery, everyone who had given up their property, paid for their debts, everything was wiped out. So the land was most valuable. It was only, dis the value was only considered by the Harvest, the amount of harvest. They figured how much the land would give or how much the vineyard would give, and the land was valued by the harvest. So the land was most valuable the 51st year after the Jubilee because there were 49 more years of harvest. And it was least valuable 49th year just before the Jubilee. Do you understand that? It was measured, the value was measured by its distance from the Jubilee year. But on Jubilee, every bond servant who'd been sold into slavery to pay for debts, every farmer who lost his property, the moment the trumpet sounded the tenth day, tenth month, the seventh month, the tenth day of that month, while the high priest was making atonement, and folks, if you've got a spiritual eye, you're beginning to see the meaning for every believer right now. Before I get to it, the high priest is in the Holy of Holies, sprinkling the blood, making atonement for all sins. And while he's making atonement, the trumpets are blasting. This is the hour of deliverance, the hour of liberty. Every prison was opened. Every man that lost his property had his bags packed and he's waiting right on his property line to step over. He's been waiting for five years and then four years, then three years. And the last three months for the Jubilee, he counted the minutes because he knows the moment the trumpet sounds. That's the joyful sound, folks. I am going to be a free man. I am going to be free. I'm getting back everything I lost. Hear the Jubilee. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> the Levites acted as monitors so that every, everyone was given justice. His claims were made known. If a landholder turned to one of his bond servants and said, well, that trumpet means nothing to me, that bond slave could laugh in his face and say, I don't care what you think about the trumpet. I know what it means. I know the joyful sound. I know the joyful sound. That's freedom. You can't hold me. You have no legal rights to me anymore.
But folks, he had to go claim it. He could jump and dance and shout in the synagogue, say, I'm free, I'm free, I'm free, I get my property back. Until he goes back and claims it, he's not going to enjoy it. And folks, we are not enjoying the Jubilee. We're not enjoying the peace and the glory and the peace that God has provided for us through the forgiveness of sins. We have not been appropriating the freedom that he has offered to us. They had to go and claim it. Now, are you ready for the rest of it? <laughs> Glory be to God. I don't know where to begin. This year of Jubilee, there's no planting. Again, there's no, uh, there's no harvesting. Everybody is totally dependent on the Lord. Debts are all canceled. Every prisoner is set free. Then we go back to Psalms 89, 15, and here is the sound again. Blessed is the people who know the joyful sound. In the original Hebrew, it, me it reads, Blessed is the people who know the meaning of the blowing of the trumpets. Blessed are those who know the meaning of the, bless of the blowing of the trumpets. Every Israelite knew the jubilee sound. They, they were reunited with their families. They knew the meaning of it. Nobody could rob them of their inheritance because they understood the joyful Zion. Now, I want you to go to Isaiah now, 61st chapter. This is going to get real good here. Isaiah 61. Oh, thank God for his truth that sets men free. Now, beloved, let me tell you something. Even though every Israelite, every Israelite had been taught and trained and knew the sound, the joyful sound, God's people today don't know it. A lot of Christians think the joyful sound is nothing but a dance and a clap and a wonderful time in the house of God. We had a joyful time. Oh, folks, it goes so far beyond that. You can't know the real joy and happiness until you know the meaning of the joyful sound. If you ask God, the Holy Ghost, to open this to you, you'll never be the same the rest of your life. The devil can't bring condemnation and guilt upon your spirit anymore. Hallelujah. Psalm 61, verses 1, 2, and 3. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord hath anointed me to preach the good tidings unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted. To proclaim liberty to the captives. This is the trumpet. The jubilee. Folks, Christ is our jubilee. Jesus Christ is our jubilee. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted. To proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to them that are bound. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. That's the cheerful year of jubilee. And the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all that mourn, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for asses, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. God cannot be glorified until you claim every provision provided by the cross of Jesus Christ. He did not die. I went all through my apartment last night in prayer singing, Jesus, you didn't die in vain. I claim every victory of the cross. You didn't die for me in vain. I'll not let it be said you died for me in vain by walking around in despair. I have been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. When Jesus ascended to heaven... He didn't ascend into the tabernacle made with hands. The Bible said he ascended into the tabernacle not made with hands. He ascended into the heavenly tabernacle. And John on the Olipatmos saw him in his high priest robes in a garment down to his feet and golden girdle around his paps. 
And I want you to know, folks, we have the idea Jesus just quietly slipped away into heaven. We see him disappearing. Oh, but I tell you, a heavenly father who had watched this, the incredible sufferings of his own son, you can't tell me. And I can prove to you that God had some great reception for his son, a triumphant entry into glory. Do you know the Bible says that there were there were chariots that came out to meet him? In fact, the Bible tells us how many chariots came out to meet him. It, it, it's, the Bible says in Psalm 68, 17, and 18, the chariots of God are 20,000, even thousands and thousands of angels, and the Lord is among them. Thou hast ascended on high. It, 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 it ties it into the ascension of Jesus Christ. 20, what, what it says, 20,000 means 20,000 times 20,000 times 20,000. There's 20,000 on the right and 20,000 on the left. 20,000 before him and behind him. Thousands upon thousands of chariots. And I see Christ coming to the eternal city of God. And he's at the gates. All the, all of the martyrs. All of the hosts of heaven. Folks, do you understand there's a tabernacle in heaven? There's a heavenly tabernacle where there are praises going on right now, where they are worshiping Him. All those who've been taken through great tribulation and have held uh, close to Jesus Christ from the beginning of time, they are around His throne praising God. Jesus approaches, and I wish you could see that scene in your mind. Our finite minds can't conceive. He's coming now as victor. He's won the victory. Hallelujah. And Jesus comes prancing in on his white horse, surrounded by these chariots. And take a look behind his chariots, folks, because they're in chains. My Bible makes it very, very clear that he spoiled principalities and powers and he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them. And you look behind, you look behind our master's chariot coming into that eternal city and you'll see Satan himself bound with chains, his head hanging, and he's being dragged and he's been openly put to shame. And you look under the chariot wheels of these thousands of angels and you'll see the principalities and powers of darkness being put to an open shame, the Bible says, before all the host of heaven. Hallelujah. He came into his glorious king, king of kings and lord of lords. And the Bible said he was given a scepter and it was a rod of iron to rule the nations. And he even now is in his power and in his authority. He's no longer weak, Jesus. He sits upon a throne at the right hand of the Father. And he rules the nations with a rod of iron. Communism is not in control. Atheism is not in control. God is in control of all things. They may despise his authority. There may be 500,000 activists days march through this city saying, we will take authority and we are in your face. Oh, no, 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 folks. They only exist now by his permission. And Bible says that he will dash them to pieces like a potter's clay. He will dash all authorities. They exist only by his permission right now. Folks, we don't have to fear any earthly power. None of it. Because he ascended as king. Hallelujah. Beloved, our understanding of the victory of the cross of Jesus can't be vague. It has to be sure. It has to be clear. Otherwise, there is, there, there is no reason to come to this house and worship. If you have just a vague concept... See, some folks say, I know I'm saved, I know Jesus ascended, and I know he's in heaven. But you know he didn't go to heaven for his own sake. He didn't go back just to exult in his own glory. He didn't, he's not in glory for himself. The Bible said he ascended into heaven for us. He's there doing a priestly work in the tabernacle of heaven. He's not only king, he's priest. He's your priest, he's my priest. 
The Bible says, For Christ has not entered into the holy places made with hands, which are the figure of the true, but into heaven itself now to appear in the presence of God for us. For he ever liveth to make intercession for us. I, I can't get over that amazing thought. He's there. He ascended. He came, took on human flesh. He suffered. He died and ascended for me, for you, for us. It was all done for us. And yet we're afraid to believe it. We're afraid to claim it. For us. <laughs> Not for his own glory. But for us. Now there, there's a reason why so many believers live in fear and confusion. Because they don't understand the present ministry of Jesus Christ in glory. Oh folks, he not only died for you. He not only lived for you, he not only ascended for you and me. He is ever living, the Bible says, to make intercession for us. Now he's doing priest work. He's busy. Hallelujah. We don't know the joyful sound. You can't know the joyful sound until you understand. My Bible makes it very, very clear. Folks, you've got... To, to understand that when Jesus ascended to heaven, he ascended with a shout and with a trumpet. The jubilee trumpet sounded the moment he ascended. The scripture says, God Christ is gone up with a shout. The Lord went up with the sound of a trumpet. Psalms 47, 5. He went up, he ascended with the sound of a trumpet. That was the jubilee trumpet proclaiming to all mankind... I have made provision for you to walk out of every prison. I've made provision for you to be restored to your family. I've, re I've made provision for everything you need in life to have the joy of God and live without fear all the days of your life. Amen. Made the provision. The trumpet was sounded. <sighs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Great numbers of saints are even now praising him. The Bible said they stand before the throne of God, serving him day and night in his temple. And he that sitteth on the throne dwells among them. The Lord which is in the midst of the throne shall feed them and lead them into living fountains of water. Now, let me talk to you for just a few minutes about the intercession of Jesus Christ. What does it mean he ever lives? He's living now. He's in glory He's in heaven interceding for you and for me. Uh, I, You know, some people have the idea that he, he's standing before the Father begging or pleading with his Father to have mercy on you and me when we fail. No, 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 folks. The intercession has to do with the accusations of Satan who come to the Father. Why would Jesus have to plead for something that his own blood paid for? Why would he have to try to extract from the Heavenly Father the mercy, the grace, the forgiveness, the power that his own blood accomplished? He's not pleading with the Father. He's interceding as your attorney because the devil has come to the throne of God and accused you of every failure, of every lie you've told, of everything in your past, and he stands before God's throne to say, I want justice. If you are just God, I want you to judge. I want you to damn and kill and destroy this, this person. And Jesus intercedes. He turns and he doesn't have to, he doesn't have to persuade the Heavenly Father. <laughs> He's declared all the principalities and powers of darkness of the justice and the glory of his cross. And he turns to Satan. You didn't hear the trumpet. You were dragged through these streets. <laughs> Devil, you have no claim. You have no right. Get your hands off my property. He's mine. He's mine. Now, the devil knows that, but you don't know it sometimes. <laughs> and the only way he can hold you is through the fear of your lack of knowledge about the victory. Yeah. 
Christ is our monitor. He sends the sheriff, the Holy Ghost is the sheriff of God. And he sends the Holy Ghost and every time the devil comes to his person and you go in and try to claim your liberty and, and you're a bondholder, the Bible said you were sold under sin and the devil will tell you, no, I'm going to hold you. You will be bound by your lust all your life. You'll be bound by homosexuality. You'll be bound by pornography. You'll be bound by drink. You'll be bound by covetousness and lust the rest of your life. The Holy Ghost says, wait a minute. No. It's Jubilee time. The trumpets have sounded. You have no legal hold. Folks, they didn't have to take the Jubilee privileges by some nebulous faith. By They, they were already Jews. This is for the Jew. All they had to do was take hold of the legal, the legality of it. This is legal. It is God's word. Yes. Folks, the faith is to get you into salvation. But once you're in, there's something you don't have to take by faith. It is legal. You stand on it. I am legally declared free from the bondage of sin. I may still struggle, but I've been delivered. I've been set free. I claim my inheritance. I claim my freedom. No matter how I feel. I may feel condemned. That's the devil saying, no, you're still my bond servant. And I can laugh in his face and say, no, I've been delivered by the blood. <laughs> Folks, not only is the intercession at the throne of God because of Satan, but he has to intercede in our own hearts. God's biggest problem is our lack of memory, our forgetfulness. And that's where the intercession comes in. The Lord has to keep coming to you, interceding. He has to come pleading with your doubts and fears and say, don't you understand what I provided? Don't you hear the joyful sound? You've been set free. Claim it by faith now. It's legal. Take it. No matter how you feel, don't listen to the lies of the devil. Don't walk in that fear. Shake it off and say, I stand on the legal word of the living God. Yes. Hallelujah. When are you going to stand and say, devil, you can't hold me. Devil, you can't claim me. I may have my battles with my flesh, but I know in my heart what Jesus did for me. I've heard the joyful sound. He has to constantly remind us that we're forgiven. He has to intercede with our doubts, calling us to remember the goodness and mercy, continually reminding us that he has the power that we need and the strength that we need through the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost is the sheriff of God. If any, if any landholder said, no, I'm not giving up this land. I don't care about the trumpets. I don't know who the sheriff was. I don't know what the, 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 the legal, uh, nomenclature would be, but I do know that the authorities came and evicted that man and installed the rightful owner in his place. Hallelujah. That's the work of the Holy Ghost. You've got to trust that the Holy Ghost will come and evict the devil and that, that false landholder out of your life and install you in the victory of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Oh, thank God we have a sheriff from heaven. Hallelujah. I want you to go back to Psalm 89 before I close. Folks, we're in a jubilee. Amen. Psalms 89. Now, let, let, me, let me show you. If, you. if you will enter into this truth now and ask the Holy Ghost to open it to you, and I would suggest you do what I'm going to do. I'm going to get this tape. No, we're not selling tapes. You know, we give, almost give them away out there. You get the tape. I'm going to listen to this five or six times until I get it good. Because I'm just like you. I forget. And I want, I want to get it so good in my spirit that every time the devil comes and lies to me, I'm going to be able to call on the sheriff. 
and I'm going to be able to say, Holy Ghost, make this real to me and help me to enter into my inheritance. Hallelujah. Now, let me tell you, let me show you in the scripture before we close now, the wonderful, wonderful benefits of the Jubilee, of understanding. Now, folks, what is the joyful sound? The trumpet of God proclaiming deliverance through the blood of Jesus Christ, that I am free. And it's the jubilee of, of, of the victory of the cross of Jesus Christ. Now, if you'll claim that, look at verse 15 again. Blessed is the people that know the joyful sound. They shall walk, O Lord, in the light of thy countenance. Now, that's, that's, that's going from glory to glory by looking into his face. That, that means very simply, you'll not walk in darkness anymore. The confusion is going to leave because you understand now. You know the joyful sound. You know it. So it's going to expel darkness, and it's going to give you intimacy with Jesus Christ. And look at the next verse there. In thy name shall they rejoice all the day, and in thy righteousness shall they be exalted. You don't have to go around anymore trying to strive and, 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 and uh, oh, folks, even after all these years, I find myself sometimes striving. I, I find the devil trying to come and, and condemn me time after time after time. You have to keep coming back to the truth. You have to, just as Jesus did in, when he was tempted in the wilderness, the truth, the truth, the truth kept coming, and he kept giving the devil the truth. You have to give the devil and your doubts the truth. The Lord said, the Lord wants you to live in his joy, even though you're being sifted by Satan at times. That there is an undergirding of joy and happiness in you because you know the joyful sound. Isn't that in your 16th verse? In thy name shall they rejoice all the day, and in thy righteousness shall they be exalted. They're not trying to work their own righteousness out now. They are depending by faith on the righteousness of Jesus Christ that is attributed to us. We're given credit for his righteousness. And verse 17, for thou art the glory of their strength, and in thy favor our horn shall be exalted. In other words, if I walk in the light, as he's given it to me, he's going to favor me. He's going to bless me, and that blessing will become my strength. I'm not going to have to walk around as a weak Christian under the thumb of the enemy anymore. Hallelujah. I'll tell you something, folks. When that chariot came running, uh, came into the gates of heaven, I want you to know that on the back of the devil was the heel print of my Savior. Because my Bible says that his heel shall crush the head. On the back of his head was the heel print of my blessed Savior. And folk, keep your eyes on that heel print. Every time the devil comes, look at the back of his head. You'll see that footprint. Hallelujah. Now, as I close, let me tell you about the one last great jubilee coming. <laughs> There's one more jubilee. The last one. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. At the last trumpet. The last joyful sound on earth. The trumpet shall sound. The dead shall be raised in corruptible, and we shall all be changed. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpets. <laughs> and the dead shall be raised first. And we which are alive remain shall be caught up with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. So shall we ever be with the Lord. No more prisons. No more bondage. No more sin. No more sickness. Jubilee. Eternal jubilee. Will you stand, please? Will you stand? I am free. I am free. I am free. Jesus broke the chains that bound me. I am free. Look at me, folks. Some of you that are here this morning, you came in here with chains. You came in here bound. You came in here depressed. You came here condemned. 
He's made provision for every, every... The Bible says that every Israelite, everyone, there was not one person excluded. Do you understand that God's made provision for everybody hearing me right now? God's made provision for your deliverance. All you have to do is step out and claim it. By faith, say, Jesus, if you're not, if you've run from the Lord, if you're back, so you come to him right now and say, Jesus, I surrender all. And I want everybody that's bound by chains of depression, bound by chains of fear, bound by chains of, of the enemy, or a habit that has you locked in and brought such despair to your heart. I want you to step out now and let's believe God for Jubilee in your life. This is the year of Jubilee, and I want you to understand and know the joyful sound before you walk out of this place this morning. Get out of your seat and come and let me pray with you. We're going to believe God for a, a miracle right now. Come while we sing, I am free, I am free. And if you're a child of God here this morning and you've been freed, you know that you're free. I want you to praise God as you sing this, I am free, I am free. Jesus broke the chains that bound me, I am free. The, the Jubilee trumpets were trumpets of joy. That was the joyful sound. Let that joy rise in your heart. I've been dancing all week in the light of the Jubilee trumpets. Folks, you understand you're redeemed. You understand God's not mad at you. You understand that he's provided for freedom. Why don't you come and claim it now? Come back and reclaim the possession. If you've lost something, God said, I'll restore to you all the years that the canker worm has eaten. God wants to restore you. He wants to restore. Up in the balcony, just go to the stairs and come down any aisle. Stairs on either side of the balcony. And let's believe Jesus for a, a time of setting you absolutely free. Don't walk out of this church bound. Maybe you don't know Jesus at all. See, I've, I've never received Christ as Lord in my life. Step out. Come now and receive him as Lord and Savior. And he, he will restore your life. That's what it's about. He will totally restore everything that the enemy has eaten. You, know, you may not get it back in the same manner, but it will come back in a way that's better than you could have ever conceived. God is faithful to his word. I am free. How many can testify in this place this morning that you know beyond a shadow of a doubt you're free. You're absolutely free. Let's see. I ask you to come. We, we come now with open face to you. I said you, we will walk in the light of your countenance. We come to the light. Now we come to you, Jesus, by the Holy Spirit. And we ask for forgiveness and cleansing that you give us an understanding we will truly know the joyful sound that we know that the trumpets have sounded Jesus has proclaimed deliverance to all prisoners he's opened every prisoner prison door and he has offered us beauty for ashes hallelujah hallelujah thank you Jesus I want everybody came forward to pray this prayer with me right now but pray it from the innermost pray it from your heart Jesus, Jesus. I trust your word Thank you for speaking to my heart. I proclaim you to be my Lord, my King, and my High Priest. Oh, Jesus, thank you for delivering me. I confess every sin. I come to the cross. I come to the blood for cleansing, for salvation. Thank you, Jesus for what you've done for me. I know you love me, and I accept your love. I claim the victory of the cross and all that it means. Give me an understanding now to know this joyful sound and to be happy in the Lord. Don't let me listen to the lies of the enemy. Now I'm gonna pray for you again. Father, I pray that you break every chain. Lord Jesus, help us to believe the good report of the Lord. We're not going to believe the devil's report. We're going to believe what God said. The Lord has declared us free by faith in the power of Jesus Christ through his sacrifice. If we believe in him with all of our hearts, we shall be saved. That's delivered. 
Lord, you said you'll restore everything that the enemy has taken from us. You will restore it. Glory to God. Lord, thank you. There ought to be joy in our hearts now, Lord. There should be joy arising when we understand and believe your report. Whose report do you believe? We shall believe the report. Folks, some of you, even this morning, the devil's report to you was, you'll never make it. The devil brought back to you all the past sins. The devil told you how wicked and vile and filthy you are. But I want to tell you something. I don't care if, if, if you kept the law and I don't care how good you were. There's nothing good in this flesh. You know what you need to say? Devil, you're so right. Oh, yes, you are. I'm the filthiest person on the face of this earth. I'm the baddest, meanest person on this earth. But it don't matter because it's under the blood of Jesus. It's all gone. It's all gone. On my way to church this morning, uh, a sister uh, started walking beside me. She said, Pastor Dave, I just have to tell you, I've been ch I'm being changed in this church. I'm being changed. Yeah. Folks, none of us have arrived, but we're being changed. Yeah. Every day, you're being changed right now by the Word and by the Spirit. We're being changed. So don't believe those lies. Don't get in an argument with the devil. Say, devil, I don't care what you say. That may all be true, but I have an attorney. I have a lawyer. Go to my lawyer. Go to my lawyer. See my lawyer. <laughs> Hallelujah. Whose report do you believe? Let's rejoice. This is the conclusion of the message.